Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at the recent Philadelphia Open, won by our good friend John Rusk from Lulu. Also coming up, a look at two recent events involving the Philadelphia section of the PGA. It's all coming up next here on Inside Golf. The 27th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf, the first tee of Greater Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, and Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia section of the PGA. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. The Golf Association of Philadelphia. Founded in 1897, GAP is the nation's oldest regional or state golf association. We serve amateur golf in Eastern PA, Southern New Jersey, and all of Delaware. GAP welcomes all golfers, junior or senior, male or female, public or private. Join the Golf Association of Philadelphia today. Our mission is always to preserve, protect, and promote the great game of golf. Before you tee it up, look us up. Visit GAPGolf.org to find out more. Welcome back to Inside Golf. You know, recently the Golf Association of Philadelphia held its 120th Philadelphia Open. It was played at Applebrook. Here with more details and who won it all from Gap, Marty Emino. All week, John Ross said he thought the Philadelphia Open was his to win. His game was in a good place. His mental state was right. It was just going to be all about the execution. 20th Gap Open champion is John Rusk. Rusk was right, though. The talented amateur just needed some extra time to fulfill the prophecy. In a four-hole aggregate playoff, Lulu's Rusk defeated Cedarbrook assistant pro Andrew Cornish and amateur Zach Drescher of Ben Creek for the 120th Open Championship at Applebrook. Rusk tallied 15 strokes in that for a whole span, compared to 17 for Cornish and 19 for Drescher. Cornish earned the low professional top prize of 8,000, his largest check as a professional. Drescher was in search of a second gap major this season, having won the middle amateur championship earlier in the year. The victory was Rusk's first gap major. I don't know if it hit home yet, to be honest with you. Um, I have never won a gap major. Um, I haven't really played in too many um, after I turned pro, but I've been thinking about it a lot this last year or so. Um, you know, I, I, I failed as a professional and I got a lot of scar tissue from that and it helps peel some of that away, to be honest with you. Um, it feels good. Um, you know, my friend, I have some friends' names on that trophy. Um, you know, Mr. Hyman's on there, um, Mr. Um, Siegel's on there. So just to have your name on a trophy with those guys is, is pretty cool just to, to begin with. Um, not to be, be cliche, but that was I'm, I'm proud of that fact. That Russ, well, who spent great, time on the Buy.com tour in the mid to late 2000s, uh, is the Kirby, first Chris, individual to win the Mark, Open, representing Lulu. Know, Overall, 14 amateurs have won the Philadelphia Open Championship on 23 occasions. Russ took charge of the playoff immediately. The extra session started on a par 5 eighth hole. Rusk was greenside in two, with Cornish and Drescher staring at pars or worse. Rusk delivered a decisive blow with this eagle. Bang! I was in a good spot there. I really felt that that's my, you know, that's kind of a shot you just sit on the range and you goof around with. It's such an easy shot, you just let the club fall down. And, and, and I told the kid, my caddy, that it's probably gonna go in before I hit the shot, and it did. Um, he was all excited. Cornish and Drescher made a par and bogey, respectively. The eagle momentum carried on to the next, the par three ninth. In his second round, Rusk almost made an ace. 
His nine iron landed a foot from the hole. In the playoff, Russ took a more, you know, conventional approach. This time, his nine iron stopped eight feet below the cup. His putt caught the left side and dropped in for a two. The tally after two holes, Rusk was in command. He had five strokes, Cornish had nine strokes, and Drescher had made 10 strokes. The par five, 540 yard 10th hole was next. Rusk added a touch of, we'll call it mini drama, with a poor third shot from the greenside bunker, but eventually salvaged par. Cornish gained a stroke with this nifty birdie chip that almost went in from the right side of the green. After three holes of the four hole playoff, Rusk had 10 strokes, Cornish 13, and Drescher 14. The final playoff hole was the par four 18. The gorgeous Applebrook finisher measuring 483 yards. As weather approached, Rusk went fairway and green. He had 45 feet on the putting surface for birdie. Both of his competitors were greenside as well when a quick moving storm forced about an hour delay. When play restarted, a stress-free Rusk two putt gave him the win. After the victory, Rusk officially headed down the shore to Wildwood to meet his family for vacation. He's a few days late, but his three young children, ages 11, nine, and seven, will appreciate the reason why. My kids give me a hard time, they're 11, nine, and seven. They, they see some trophies at my house from the 1900s. Um, so it's tough. I haven't won anything. You know, I've won the club championships and stuff like that, but I haven't won anything this in 20-some in years. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm very proud. Um, like I said, I don't think it hit me yet. Um, when I, you know, when I get back from the shore, I'm sure we'll celebrate on Saturday up at the Lou, but um, I've, been, I've been playing good since, you know, for, for, for about a month or two now. Uh, I've been working hard, and, and like I said, I don't think it's hit me yet, but I, I think it will when I, when I get in the car on my way down to the shore. A new starter has entered the Rusk family conversation. It's called the Johnny J. McDermott Trophy, presented to the winner of the Philadelphia Open. Congratulations to all three players for making the playoff. Reporting for Gap, I'm Marty Eminel. Thanks, Marty, and congratulations to our good friend John Rusk from Lulu. You know, I think John probably wanted to make sure he got some face time while he was playing in that Philadelphia Open. Well, John, you took care of business. I hope you got as much face time as you wanted because you deserve it. Stay with us. More to come here on Inside Golf. Hi, Tony Salucci with the Beacon Group of Companies. If your company has between 50 and 500 employees enrolled in your health insurance plan, there's a really good chance we can reduce your costs significantly and increase the benefits employees receive. How do we do it? We put you together with several thousand employers of a similar size across the country so your company can get amazing buying power. Schedule a conversation with one of our employee benefit specialists today at mybeacongroup.com. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Recently, the Philadelphia section of the PGA held its annual tournament. It's called the Assistant Professional Tournament. There's a lot at stake because some of the top finishers move on to a national event featuring assistant professionals. That's down in Florida come fall. So let's see how things turned out this year at White Manor. The championship was won by Zach Barbin from the Chesapeake Bay Club, and he did it in a rather dramatic fashion. He birdied three of his final four holes to beat Zach Oakley from Bitterman by one stroke. He fired an impressive eight under par score in the 36-hole stroke play event, and Barbin made 12 birdies during the tournament. You know, you want to enjoy the moments you have in competition. That's why you play. You want to feel the, the adrenaline. You want to make a putt when it matters. You want to hit the game-winning shot. I mean, that's what we 
play sports, right, for the competition and for that excitement. And I just tried to really just focus on what I was doing, not worrying about who, you know, what everyone else was doing around me. And, uh, yeah, it paid off towards the end there. The win for Zach adds to what has been an impressive oh, summer of golf the for the Barbin the family. The Brother the Austin won the BMW the Philadelphia the Amateur Championship the and the Maryland and Amateur. And Brother the Evan won the Delaware the Amateur. And Behind Barbin, Brian Bergstahl from Shawnee in a golf resort finished in third place. Rolling Green's Anthony Sebastianelli finished in fourth place. Following the event, Zach Oakley will lead five fellow section PGA members competing in the 2024 National Car Rental Assistant PGA Professional Championship. It's going to be held November 14th to the 17th at the PGA Golf Club in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Once again, congratulations to Zach Barbin. How about the year the Barbin boys are having this year in golf? I mean, they are winning everything, it seems, both amateur championships and everything else. They have a new trophy room, I'm sure, on the drawing board with the Barbins. All right, recently, Philadelphia Junior Tour event was held at Rivercrest. Fundamental Tour powered by Operation 36, sir. and Operation 36 is a division of Golf Genius. It's a great way for young juniors to get a lot of experience at tournament play. I've been playing golf for three years, since I was six years old. I can't pick what I like about it. I just like playing on golf courses and getting to know about golf courses. You get to meet different people and compete with them. In the Operation 36 style, golfers learn from the green backwards as they progress. They can begin to increase their distance from the hole until they're playing the full length of the hole. The fundamental tour is targeted towards boys and girls ages 7 to 18 who are just beginning their journey into tournament golf. The fundamental tour aims to provide tournaments to players whose abilities are in the growth stages. What, what excites you about playing in these events? Um, because I get to meet new friends. Okay. And why do you like playing in these events? Because I like to play the golf and I just like the opportunity to, com to compete. I played in the backyard, they saw me swinging, you know, plastic balls in the backyard and especially my older son, he just started taking off and, and all of a sudden now, after school, you know, anytime he's home, he should be doing other things, doing homework, he's out trying to play golf, uh, so he just, he just loved it and took on to it, so we've been trying to find opportunities to get him to play and he loves to compete too, so um, that's how we found these events. We're just here for fun, um, you know, we're learning the game, you get to go compete, you compete against the course, play new courses that you haven't uh, played, but I love the setup and, and how this is uh, kind of let them just, just have fun and like you said, be able to make pars and birdies and, and have that, it's been great. Since the fundamental tour is geared more towards a novice player, each event features reduced yardages, a maximum score of double par, and the ability to use a caddy. The emphasis is on having fun and game improvement. It's good for her. I think golf is mental, and that's her biggest struggle right now. It's not hitting the ball. It's more so like having a bad shot and then learning to let it go and like move on. Um, and so what's interesting is that when she started in January, it was cold. So we were just at the driving range. And there's a big difference of hitting at the driving range versus actually being on a course. So it's been, it's been challenging, but I think, you know, last week really fired her up and now she's excited. We're coming from Lidditz and Lancaster area, so a little bit far away, but we've talked to, to everybody we, we talk to that's got their kids playing golf. Um, we, we definitely mention this league and, and suggest coming and checking it out. Our thanks to the Philadelphia PGA, the Junior Tour, for allowing us to take a look at what happened recently at Rivercrest. What a fun way for kids who are maybe just learning the game, all the way up to kids that are 18 who have played a little bit. They get that tournament-style golf in their blood, and who knows, someday they may be playing for pay. Maybe that's a reach, but you never, ever know. And you know, if you'd like more information on the Junior Tour event, just go to phillyjuniortour.com. All right, stay with us. We're going to be back in just a moment with our Tee-Off panel. Our Tee-Off panel is brought to you by Lulu Country Club.
Welcome back inside golf continues now from the grill room. It's Lulu Country Club in Upper Dublin and we are happy to have back with us for another segment from Swing It and Ding It the podcast. You know him as Moose and that's all we're going to say. We're not going to tell you his real name. He's Moose. Good to see you, Moose. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Joe Logan, no stranger, from myphillygolf.com, who had a recent birthday. We're not going to tell you how many, but happy birthday. This is Ken Phillips in his first year as the president of the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Now, uh, a few weeks back, uh, somebody had qu asked me, why not have the panel discuss asking you questions, me in particular, and, you know, just fill up a few minutes with whatever questions they want to fire at me about my career, about golf, whatever, anything. And uh, I got some positive feedback, and I thought we'd do it with one of our panelists. Well, Joe Logan, among the three panelists that we have joining me today, has been here forever. And I thought, why not have an Ask Joe? Now, Joe, if you don't know this, in addition to do it myphillygolf.com, he was a sports writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer for how many years? 26. 26 years. Uh, covered multiple sports, not just golf. And he also has done magazine articles, profiles of golfers and anybody related to the game. And he has his own little podcast called myphillygolf.com. So Joe, thanks for being our victim here today. <laughs> okay. uh, we're gonna start with Moose. Moose, fire away on Joe Logan. Well, I was going to ask you what's going to happen with Liv and the PGA Tour, but I think we're going to have more questions and answers with that. We'll let you talk. If you've ever listened to our show, Swing It and Ding It, you know we like to talk about favorite this, favorite that, Philadelphia areas. But I would ask you if you had two rounds left, right? If you wanted to play two more rounds of golf, one anywhere in the world and one in the Philadelphia area, where you play and why? Uh, wow. <laughs> That's a good one, you know? Jeez. Um, I love Pine Valley. I've played it enough times to know how hard it is. I don't know if I'd pick that because it might beat me up too bad. Uh, I love the cricket club. I play there quite a bit. Um, I'd love to be able to play the little nine-hole course that I grew up on in North Carolina, but it's gone. It's not there anymore. Uh, and, you know, maybe Pebble Beach, Augusta. I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> from Tarboro's course, it's not there anymore. Tarboro, North Carolina is where he's from. To Pebble Beach in Augusta. That's, yeah. that's a range. I played them both, but I could play them again. Oh, the old course, too, in Scotland. The old course? Why not? Hey, if you can do it, do it. Do you have any uh, questions yeah. for our guest one answerer? Thing, one thing I like to do is when I go to a tournament, or even to our, some of our amateur tournaments, is I'll, if I'm at the range or the putting green or whatever, I'm watching somebody who's a good player, and I'm trying to pick up something. What do they do? You know, what makes them who they are? So I'll ask Joe, you've covered so much. Give me one tidbit of watching somebody. Maybe it was their routine. Maybe it was, you know, the way they, they putted or whatever. Give me, just give me a little slice of something that we can grasp onto. I used to love to go to the range at courses and just sit on a, you know, for an hour or more and watch. And one of the, my favorite things to do in doing that was to watch Tiger arrive because he would always go to the end of the range and he would walk along behind him and they could all the other guys could sense him you know, but they were unworthy to make eye contact really and they would they would just sort of look back at oh here he comes here he comes and he would walk all the way down there and put his bucket of balls down and just start rifling these shots out and, and the, the guys just shuddered how are you going to beat some guy you can't even make eye contact with him so, i don't have that kind of presence when i walk to the end of the range <laughs> who's that guy <laughs> <laughs> but that sort of thing um gosh what else did i mean you have any other no that's good that's uh, yeah. okay. i used right. to well you know before we were talking i used to do a, a bit on on the sunday golf page every sunday was a shot get some local club pro day show you how to hit various shots. I was telling Ken earlier, I would always pick something I wanted to know how to hit <laughs> and go and get some self-serving article. For example, like these long bunker shots from the fairway bunkers, well, 100 yard shot into a green. How do you hit that shot? And I would go do that every Sunday. Let me jump in here. Uh, you've been covering golf. Like I say, you've been a sports writer, you said for 50 years or whatever. Uh, I covered you, politics before. You, huh? Why not? You've done everything. <laughs> Baseball, you covered Temple basketball, even John Chaney. Uh, do you remember the first golf interview you ever did, and who did you do it with? Well, uh, 
when I first started writing about golf at the Enquirer. It was actually before I was a sports writer there. I was in the news. Uh, but they knew I had played high school and some college golf. And, and uh, Jay, uh, I mean, Sigal. Sigal. Jay Sigal was number one. Just won back to back U.S. amateurs. And apparently there was nobody in the sports department who could do too much with it. And they got me, and I interviewed him. And he, that was probably the first lengthy golf profile I did. And after that, went to the sports department and started covering golf. Right. How about that? I think if one of those years, he also won the mid am didn't he? He's the only USGA guy to have won both of those events. And a US British, too, I think. And a mid am same year. Yeah, that's pretty good. Nine Walker Cups. Right. Who was, uh, in his final 40 seconds, who was like the toughest interview for you? Tour player. I'll limit it to tour players. Uh, well, when it comes to tour players, they can all be fabulously nice when they shoot 65 <laughs> and complete jackasses when they shoot 75. Sounds like a lot of golfers. <laughs> all of them, to a person. Okay, but you don't want to slap a name on it. One well, of the I mean, uh, Furyk was always a nice guy. Uh, Sean O'Hare, I used to have a lot of lunches with him and hang out with him and talk okay. to him a lot. Uh, Phil Mickelson was always wonderful in the interview room. Tiger was always boring in the interview room. He wouldn't say was, anything. Was, I've, I've been in news conferences with Tiger. Um, was he as intimidating uh, in news conference, do you think, as he was just like walking down the range or... Because he, 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 that was part of his whole makeup, right? Absolutely. To yeah. intimidate his opponent. He, and he did. You know, there was a time where he looked like an action hero. Remember when he was so bulked up and stuff? Uh, he could be he intimidating. Was, yeah, like most. Especially to the players because we didn't have to play against him. They did. You know, and with us, he, he just never said anything controversial because it was not in his interest to do so. He had a lot of sponsors, corporate sponsors. Anything he could say could blow up in his face. And so his... He just didn't say much. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, interesting guy. Joe Logan, myphillygolf.com. You got to scratch beneath the surface here to find out uh, who were some of the people he admired, maybe some he didn't. Thank you, Joe, Moose, Kenny. We'll be back. More of Inside Golf coming up. Monco All Access is brought to you by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. For this week's Monco All Access, we visit Hickory Valley Golf Club in Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania. Originally, the golf course was built in 1968, and with the two courses, we get everything from, you know, like I said, the novice that comes out to the player that's a, a scratch player. Uh, the community around here really likes, they just like what we do. I mean, it's just a day to come out and have some fun and just get away from life for a little while. It's about as easy as it gets. We've got 36 holes on the golf course. We have the ambassador course, and then we also have the presidential course. Uh, older people, seniors, and novices to the game, they like to play the ambassador. Presidential side, a little bit more tougher, uh, about 50 more bunkers, and we actually have hosted the state publics here twice. And we have full service. We have a full pro shop with anything you need. Uh, we have a driving range. Unfortunately, it's a little bit shorter. We just you know, prefer to use irons only. It's um, just a lot of fun to come out. Come out and have a day at Hickory Valley and just enjoy life as, as you'd like to play golf. And one thing that I tell people is we have a couple people here in their 80s that play golf. You know, golf is there for you. You can go anywhere basically in the world, even by yourself, and play a game of golf. For more on golf and other fun things to do all around Montgomery County, PA, check out valleyforge.org. We'll see you next time on Monco All Access. For the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board, I'm Rachel Riley. Now the Inside Golf Rapid Rules Tip with Tom Karpis, rules official on the PGA Tour Champions. During a round, sometimes we encounter artificial objects, which under the rules of golf are considered obstructions. In this case here, we have movable obstructions. We have, in one case, the ball on top of it, another case, the ball up against it. The rules are pretty simple. If the ball is against it, we can move the obstruction and there's no penalty. We can do this anywhere on the course. If the ball were to move, there's no penalty, just replace it. In the case of a ball on an obstruction, in this case here, we're gonna lift it. We're gonna remove the movable obstruction Mark the spot directly beneath where the ball was lying, and we have a one club length area in which we're going to drop the ball 
to get it back in play. And remember, golf rules. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> It's free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> PGA Works is on a mission to ensure that the golf workforce looks more like America. This mission is a dream with a plan. Through fellowships, college scholarships, career exploration events, and championship golf. PGA Works is inspiring talent from diverse backgrounds to pursue careers throughout the golf industry. Visit PGAReach.org. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Guess where we're going to be next week? Right back here at River Winds in West Deptford with the owner, Ron Jaworski. Yeah, the Polish rifle, Jaws, number seven. He's going to be joining us to talk about his career a little bit, all those hits he took with the Eagles back in the day, and then how he moved on to golf course ownership, as well as so many other things that he's been successful at. Ron Jaworski, next week, right here from Riverwinds on Inside Golf. Golf's a great game, isn't it? Find out how Jaws feels about it next week. I'm Harry Donahue. We'll see you next week here on Inside Golf. The 27th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf, the first tee of Greater Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, and Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia section of the PGA.